everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Here in the divisional round, the pressure gets dialed up several more notches. Some players rise to the occasion. Some can't handle the heat. We'll see who shines in the spotlight and gets his team to the conference title game. It's the Bengals going up against the Browns. Just off the shores of Lake Erie, we are at First Energy Stadium in a city aptly named after its founder, Moses Cleveland, way back in 1796. Coming up, it's Divisional Round Saturday, and we've got an AFC battle on tap between the Cincinnati Bengals and the Cleveland Browns. So on fourth down, on comes the left-footed punter, Kevin Huber, to punt it away. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. So here come the Browns for their first drive on offense. They'll be led out by their quarterback, the former USC Trojan. It's Cody Kessler. When Cody Kessler was drafted, many people thought it was a surprise that he went in the third round. They thought he would go later. But when he came out, the man who selected him told the rest of the world, trust me, this guy can play. Just short of the 45 at the 44. Just what the Browns needed there. Good for a gain of 17. That O-line, they cleared a big hole there on that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve, and we're seeing it here. Not only are they controlling things right at the line of scrimmage, but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels. You know, get to the linebacker spot, the secondary spot, getting all the way downfield with their blocking, which helps keep the running back clean. They'll try to continue that trend here this afternoon. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. Now a handoff here to his running back. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. That'll move the sticks for the Browns, a gain of 12. That's another nice run, and I have to tell you, some of the coaches that I played for, their philosophies were always different when they see a guy running the ball well. Some of them wanted to immediately go to play action and throw it now because it's wide open. But other coaches said, you know something? Until they stop him, that big boy is going to keep getting the football. And that might be the direction that they're going to go right now. Let's go. Green, 39. On first and 10, it's Kessler. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. Give him a couple on the catch in second and eight. And the Buffet boys, the O-line. Hopefully they're ready today. Listen, you got to feed them first. But if you do, you usually get a great product out on the field. And when they play well, the quarterback can't wait to feed them afterwards. Let's see what the offense comes with here. Second and eight. And he'll give it here to his running back. And able to push forward for about four down to the 37. And the Bengals starting defensive unit now. Geno Atkins battled some injuries in 2015 and was challenged to get back to his form, and he did exactly that in 2016. Back to the Pro Bowl. Size, strength, agility, and also a competitive streak that rivals anyone's in the league.
Let's see if they can convert here on third and three. To throw, Kessler. He's got his tight end in Joku. And he gets it to the 32. Good enough for a first down. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Going to give this time to the tailback. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. And Charles, despite this list of key inactives that we see here, they've obviously still been pretty successful. Give everyone credit for this one, because to me, when that happens, key guys are out, the next man steps up and plays well, but that starts with the organization itself, all the way through. No excuses for guys being out, finding guys who are capable backups who can step up and play when they need them, and we've seen the results of that. This team knows how to work through things. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. He came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. Seventh play of the drive, forthcoming on third and eight. Shotgun snap, Kessler. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he will have the first before he's brought down right on the chalk of the 20. That's good for a Cleveland first down, an 11-yard pickup. So now in Charles, they told us offense in the red zone was a focus this week in practice. A huge priority, and the key was to get points. So you know that all the time during the week they talked about executing, taking care of the football, no big mistakes, make sure they put points on the board and come out of it with that. Give them a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action and hit them over the top. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Here we go now. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he'll get this one down to about the 17. Back-to-back one-yard runs here, so that leaves him with a third down at eight. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blows. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. In search of eight yards on third down, they've already converted two of these on this drive, two for two. Now Kessler on the bootleg. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down. So hang on. A big call coming on third down. Illegal forward pass. Offense. So they decline it as that will bring up fourth. And I know that yardage and field position are keys to any game played, but you've got to consider downs when you're talking about pass. Give it here to his running back. Takes this to the 45. Got a little space after that nice move. 
It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball, but when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. Going to give this time to the tailback. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. Boy, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral. Also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other bats in the league. here to his running back and he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain five yards on the carry good pickup on first down partner i think from our experience together we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you if i'm going to run the football on first down i've got to get at least four yards they got five here they've got to feel pretty good about that one And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. So they get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. Looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. So far, four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. down and he went backwards he'll be down at the 30 that's going to go as a loss of a yard and it'll be second down every year i go to the combine to marvel at the speeds that linebackers are running nowadays they run like dbs and let's face it they know how to finish plays too eyes up head up run right through them here we go now green 39 now they'll throw with kessler throws a quick hitter on the slant that's complete and he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. And again, this time to the tailback. And he'll have the first down, getting this one to the 14-yard line. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. I know the game's changed. A lot of people would say it's evolved. Look, I'm a little bit Neanderthal, okay? I love this. No exotic formations, no misdirection. Just line up and run the dart ball, pick up the first down. I love it. Yeah, third and short, that's what you're supposed to do. Like you said, old school smash mouth football. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he'll fight his way down right around the 12. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. And he'll give it here to his running back. They'll get this down inside the 10 for a pickup of about three. The Browns on third down. They've been good, three for four thus far. This will be third and five. And it's caught. And he will have the first down before he's brought down at the three. It's a gain of six as they're able to convert. And now it's first and goal. 
Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. Two minutes to go here in the first half. Back with more AFC playoff action after this timeout. A reminder, as we did all through the regular season, we'll check in with Larry Ridley at halftime. He'll have highlights and analysis of this first half of play. And the offense readies for play number 10 of this series. before you go on the slant. Kick this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And this return nets positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. strike for 16 and a first down. Now this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack and guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. Time report. All right, Brandon, we'll see if I can get through this without being skipped as we welcome you to our EA Sports halftime report. The Browns have controlled the flow, but it hasn't given them a big advantage. The Bengals won't care how much their offense is on the field as long as they find a way to advance in these playoffs. So let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. First and 10, run play coming up here. He'll pick up more than 10 yards on the play. 
Later on the drive, Kessler's completion is made out of the gun. And he'll end up at the 20-yard line before being tackled. Browns now late in the second quarter. Coleman's got the catch here, and it's going to be caught for the touchdown. They go ahead by a field goal. So that's going to do it for us. We'll send you back now to field level for some more playoff football. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. Here's the Browns' offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking for some separation here as we begin the third quarter. I like the way you turn that because now I think they go a little bit deeper into their playbook. They like what they did in the first half. That worked okay. But in order to get the separation that you just talked about, change things up a little bit. Change your tendencies. Try and hit them a little bit more with some things they didn't see in the first half. We'll see if they do just that. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. Play fake. Kessler. To the sideline, and wow, what a catch there. He doesn't get a lot, but he was able to get the feet down complete. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. If you're running out route, it's likely you're going to end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up, and making sure it was a catch. The Browns on third down. They've been near perfect. Four for five to this point. This is third and seven. Hurry up, here we go. Throwing is Kassler. Looking left side. He's got it complete. And he goes out right around the 39. It's a gain of 10, and the Browns are going to get a first down. People worry about throwing the out route because often it can get jumped, and that can turn into an either an incompletion or an interception. But not on that one. Everything came together, and he catches it and goes over the sideline. out incomplete a pretty good coverage there and both of these defenses they've had good coverage throughout this one no doubt about it and in today's nfl where we're used to a bit more scoring this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build who's going to make the big play and he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down that's good for a Cleveland first down and 11 yard pickup. So much for halftime adjustments by the defense because you know they had to talk about it. The entire first half, they struggled to contain it. And here he is coming out in the second half and establishing the same tone. Still running the football with authority, still gaining big yardage. So I just figure in the offensive side, they said, well, there is no adjustment. Until they slow us down, keep going at them, keep handing them the football. time to the tailback takes to midfield but no further just a yard there nice job by the defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down well played i must say yeah only getting one yard there was no room to run so what will they do on the ground through the air let's see second and nine running back. <laughs> a big hit. 
Knocked down sideways. Call it an eight-yard gain. Much better shape now on third and just a yard. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. This is third and one, very likely four down territory, even if they don't get it, though. And he'll give it here to his running back. And gets by him, and now a little daylight. And oh, so close as he takes it all the way to the two-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive. Because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense gets a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. and goal here from the two. And to give this time to the tailback. And this is not going to do it as he stopped at the two-yard line. No gain there, and it's going to set up second and goal. So stuff from the two, now what? You know me pretty well. What do you think I want here? Play action. Definitely. Let him get outside and create. And if he has to run it, he has a little bit more space. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. Now, that was a terrific play. We're down here near the goal line, and only one word comes to mind for me, and that's overwhelm, because they absolutely overwhelmed the offensive line. He came free and made the hit in the backfield. Under pressure now, and he's going to go down. Sack back around the eight. Tyler Davison in there to drop him for a four-yard loss, and it'll be fourth down. Here's Kevin Huber now as he'll kick it away for the second time. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. 51 yards on the punt there. And the Browns will take over with a first and 10 deep in their own territory. And now the Browns coming out on the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. A good pick up there for the Browns, 15 yards. I know anytime you watch a team run the ball really well, there's a pinball effect, people bouncing off of each other. There's also some things of beauty in there. When you see these nice, explosive, strong runs, and this guy, he knows how to carry the football really well and continually wants the football. Why? He knows his offensive line is going to give him great effort, and he gives great effort himself to finish off runs. Now a handoff here to his running back. And the hole closes quickly. He gets it across the 35 to the 36-yard line. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. running back 
Finding some room at midfield. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. That good for 19 and a first down. And the tackle's made there by one of the secondary members. And I can guarantee you, having played that spot in the huddle right now or on the field, they're urging for a little bit more support from the guys up front. I actually remember one game where I hopped over a defensive lineman to make a tackle downfield and realized he was 10 yards downfield. That's not good. That's being driven off the line of scrimmage, and you can't have that if you're going to win a game on defense. And to give this time to the tailback. Got some real estate inside the 30. Pass the 20. And all the way in. Touchdown, Cleveland. A great play there. 45 yards. And the Browns add on to their lead. And on that long run, maybe the defense caught napping a little bit. The concentration level may not have been there. I agree with you on that one because those types of plays, when they result like that, they're almost like big bolts of lightning, aren't they? Whoosh, and off he goes. And they will line up now for the two-point try. They'll try and run it up the middle. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. One Kevin Huber now as he's on to punt for Cincinnati. Let's go, let's go, let's go, guys. Fielded at the 20. And now back out comes the offense. And this one not officially in the bag, but it's looking more and more like you and I are going to be in these same seats next week for a game to go to the Super Bowl. And it's contrary to our meeting with the, with the visitors, wasn't it? Remember when we went over to the hotel before the game, and one of the themes they kept hitting us with was, let's put the pressure on the number one seed and see if they can handle it. Let's, let's do that. Well, they're the number one seed for a reason. Best team all year long. They're showing it again in this game. running back and for one of the few times here today this run's not going to go anywhere no gain on the play and it's going to bring up a third down and in this situation with the lead fourth quarter they're liking keeping the ball on the ground i'm sure that's just smart football but you know the defense has to know it as well they've got to stop them here so now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. It's a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. When we talk with people about what we think the most important quality for an NFL quarterback to possess, what do people usually say? Arm strength. And he showed the arm strength there. Yeah, pretty good bullet pass he threw, but he wasn't accurate. out now to kick this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. Now this offense ready to head back out there. And right now they're just looking for a little more cushion, trying to make this a two-score game. Points here would go a long way, obviously, to propelling them into the next round. And this is where the head coach 
offense coordinator. They've had to set a tone all year long about what they do on offense. So most teams want to stay in attack mode, but you have to do it with some bit of caution, don't you? Because you can't come away with no points. You need these points here in order to feel a lot better about where they are in this game. But this time of the year, playoffs, game of this magnitude, this is what we hope for. Yeah, it's exactly what we hope for. You want to run your offense cautiously, but not so cautiously that you just give it up. Second down following the run. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 13 yards to pick up there. Good for a Cleveland first. I think this defense tired of seeing him run the football. And this D-line probably getting sick of the O-line as well. And as I'm watching this, I'm thinking about a conversation I had with Adam Gase, the head coach of the Miami Dolphins in the offseason. He told me that he asked his running backs, each week for their favorite runs. Give me your three top runs. And right now, you're seeing a guy that's probably using his top runs to great advantage in this game. He is in a zone. And to give this time to the tailbacks. <laughs> A decent run there following the display of quick feet down just inside the 45. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old-school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. So up through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Now a handoff here to his running back. He'll get it to the 40. He broke a tackle there, but couldn't get much further. A three-yard pickup on second and four. Now they'll need to convert here on third and a little more than a yard. And the defense searches for one more stop here after the run on second down. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. But they didn't accomplish their goal. They didn't get a stop there, gave up another first down. They have all three timeouts in their pocket. I think defensively, you've got to start thinking about using them here. I was just going to ask you at what point you think now's the go time? I think now's the go time. I don't think you sit back and wait because they can take a lot of time off the clock between plays and run three to four and really put you in a stressful spot. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Going to give this time to the tailback. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people right, stacked up at the line of scrimmage right, as they try and bleed 56. it out. Lucky 56. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he'll be taken down at the 33, a pickup of about four. The recipe's pretty simple, I think, right? Just <laughs> give your superstar the ball, continue to feed him. Yeah, don't overthink this one, right? Make sure he's touching the football, but you're also counting on his intelligence and in playing the game as well. If it's not there, don't force the run. Just make sure you hang on to the football and keep the clock ticking. Time for a break. We'll come back for the electrifying conclusion after this. So the Browns in possession of the football here as we get you reset. They're facing a critical third down now as they try to hold on to this lead. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll get this down to about the 30, 31-yard line. 
And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively. With a minute. So still a small chance here with a little over 30 seconds to go, but they're definitely going to need this one to bounce their way. And this is going to be recovered by the hand team. And that should just about put a capper on this one. The uh, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we've brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. carry heading left and he's going to be met at about the 43 and play is stopped here timeout it's the defense calling the timeout here that'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside time to the tailback. It's a pickup of 13, and with that 13 yards, this ball game just about over. Brandon, they're still in the lead, but momentum's certainly been going the opposite direction, so to me, that's a really important pickup there on third down. Try and regain some confidence, and you're right, they need to stem the tide a little bit. That certainly helped. Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. It's a win for the Browns, and they're happy in the dog pound.